Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that in this country last year, 150,000 persons were injured in the bathrooms of their homes? 500,000 met stair accidents. One million persons did such things as look for gas leaks the wrong way. And another two million found their own ways to get hurt. Of course, you don't have to be careless to meet Miss Hat. A blizzard might come to your town, such as this one. Or you might go south for the winter and run into this. You don't know the odds against you, but certain men do. The insurance actuaries who meet daily to compute those odds and figure how much to charge you for protection. Gentlemen, this morning I am pleased to report that the revised rate tables formulated by our Mr. Haskins for the Alaska area have reduced the company's loss ratio to 0.02%. I'm now advised by Mr. Haskins that new rate computations will be required for areas in China. Mr. Haskins. <clears throat> Current climatic conditions in the Himalaya Mountains forecast an unusually heavy snowfall this winter. My calculations indicate that after the spring thaws, the Yellow River will be in flood stage between latitude 29 to 31 degrees north and longitude 103 to 108 degrees east. I therefore recommend that the rates on all risks in this area be increased uh, 7.8 percent. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Haskins. Gentlemen, 8.55. Oh, Haskins. Yes, sir. In view of the good work you've been doing, I have a little something for you. I'm sure it'll come as a surprise. Yeah. Your assistant, sir. Yes, my boy. And to make this possible, for the first time in 40 years, Mr. Mapleton, our president, has waived our seniority rules. Mr. Bixby, I... I, I, I don't know what to say. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Not at all, my boy. It's gratifying to see a Harvard man getting places. I guess we both owe what we are to Harvard. Oh, definitely, sir. And thank you again. Good morning, Mr. Haskins. Oh, good morning, Miss Riley. Mr. Mapleton's secretary just told me the good news. Congratulations. Well, thank you, Miss Riley. Would you please bring in my personal file? very happy about your promotion, Mr. Haskins. Hmm? Oh, I am, I am. But this alters my schedule completely. I hadn't figured on becoming Mr. Bixby's assistant for three more years. Is that bad? No. But according to my calculations, I was to become eligible for the presidency of the company on, uh, let's see, April 18th, 1965. Morning or afternoon? Miss Riley, please. Now I'll be eligible in 1962, and I don't know whether the presidency will be open. Now, let me see. If Caldwell retires in four years instead of five, and if Mason and the claims department... Won't this make a difference in other things, too? I mean, aside from nutmeg. Oh, oh, it does, it does. Well, let's see. We don't have to wait to get married. Why, if we move that up three years, too, we can get married right away. Now we're getting down to the fine print. And we won't have to start out in two rooms. We can build our own home. With a white picket fence? Yes. With 264 pickets. Must we have exactly 264? Well, if we have fewer pickets, the spaces would be wider and our dog would get out. Must we have a dog? I just thought it would be safer for Horace. Who's Horace? Haven't I told you, Miss Riley? He's our son. Our son? Now, don't get mad. You'd have found out about it anyway. Oh, Milty. Uh, Who's mad? Miss Riley. Oh. Please, it, it, it's, it's 9 o'clock. We're on company time. <clears throat> There it is again, the eternal triangle, you, me, and company time. Haven't you ever given in to an impulse? Uh, yes, once. It was at a Yale-Princeton game. I stood up and cheered for Harvard. That's it, Milty. Get impulsive. Uh, uh, Mr. Mapleton, I, uh, <laughs> I was coming to your office, sir, uh, to thank we'll you. We'll discuss that later, Haskins. Bixby. Haskins, uh... You computed the new supplementary rate tables, didn't you? Uh, why, yes, sir. And are your figures available? Uh, they're right here. Would you mind glancing through them again, Mr. Haskins? I, I no, not at all. No. Yes, Mr. Haskins. Why? 
Well, there's an error. Is there, Mr. Haskins? I, I believe I've misplaced a decimal point. You believe you misplaced it? I have misplaced it, sir. I am disappointed in you, Haskins. Do you realize nutmeg salesmen all over the world are selling policies at a loss to the company because of your inaccurate figures? This is a black mark against our department. On our actuarial exactitude rests the very foundations of nutmeg. I, 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 I can't understand how I could have made a mistake. In our profession, Haskins, there is no room for mistakes. The primary rule is complete and undeviating accuracy. You failed us. I uh, guess we can forget about this for a while. I'm sorry, Mr. Bixby. It wouldn't be so bad, sir, if it had happened to a Yale man. M Milton! Please don't take it so hard, Milton. Why, lots of men make mistakes. And this was such a little one. Just a decimal point. But I've never made a mistake. Oh, Mr. Haskins! Riley, notify all branch officers to recall all policies computed from the supplementary section of the new rate book. But Mr. Haskins just walked out. Oh, he's acting strangely. I better go after him. There's no time. Those figures have gone out to 1,300 agencies. Get on the telephone. Oh, but he might do something drastic. Why, he might even kill himself. That's what I've always liked about Haskins. Conscientious. Property, eh? Now, ain't that silly? What would I do with a hot park bench? Then leave it where it belongs. Look, didn't anybody ever tell you about the birds and the trees? What about the birds and the trees? All day long. Chirp, chirp, yadda, the yadda, chirp, chirp, yadda, the yadda. How do you expect they got to sleep with all that racket going on? Birds or no birds, that bench goes back where the park commissioner put it. Sure. The park commissioner sleeps in his office all day. What does he care what happens to the people of Hartford? You don't look like people of Hartford to me. You're a suspicious character. Now, beat it before I run you in. Okay, okay, but you just wait till the next policeman's ball. Yeah? What about it? I won't dance with you. Don't do it, neighbor. No dame is worth killing yourself for. Hello. Hello. I apologize, neighbor. You're not on the verge of suicide. You're already dead. Hello! Sit down, neighbor. Sit down. Didn't mean to frighten you. Oh, pardon me, sir. Did you say something? Yes, I was just about to say that you look like the intelligent type, and I'm conducting a financial survey. A financial survey? Yes, I stopped the man on the street and asked him a question. Now, the question for the day is... Can you spare a quarter? Oh. Oh, oh I understand. You're a panhandler. Please. I like to think of myself as a businessman with a minimum of operating costs. Now, to prove my point, let's say I just sold you a brass cuspidor for the lowly price of 25 cents. But I never use a cuspidor. Never use a cuspidor? No. And what you need is a mop. And boy, are you lucky. I just happen to have one left. There, isn't that a beautiful mop? Oh, don't let that bother you. It's just a little nick got damaged in the warehouse. Just a second, neighbor. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. Suppose I did sell you this mop for the lowly price of 25 cents. Naturally, you've got to take the mop home, and what happens? You throw the mop over your shoulder, you start walking down the street. As you turn the corner, the handle of the mop hits the fire alarm box, breaks the glass, and sends in an alarm. Unaware that you have sent in an alarm, you continue on your way. You reach the next corner, you step off the curb, and what happens? 
The fire engines are tearing down the street. They're coming nearer, but you don't notice them. They're coming closer. Look out! Are you all right? Uh, I, I think so. I... Yeah, sure. Sure. You're all right. Well, what about that dog? In order to miss you, the fire engine swerved and hit faithful old rags. There he is, lying in the street. Man's best friend. You kneel down. You speak to him. You say, Rags. Rags, old boy. Well, it's too late. You pick him up. But is he dead? <laughs> no, he bites you and he's got rabies. You start to froth at the mouth. You begin to go mad. You lose your memory. You've got magnesium. But am I going to stand by and see that happen to you? No, sir. You just give me a quarter, I won't sell you that mop, and you'll avoid all that trouble. For the lowly price of two bits, that's a bargain. It, it certainly is. Here. Thanks a lot, pal. Got to keep a record. Income tax, you know. Well, so long, neighbor. Hello, neighbor. I've been watching you, and just like I figured a panhandler. Officer, would you mind lengthening the sleeves? I suppose this guy's been trying to sell... Oh, no, sir, he didn't sell me anything. He's my friend. He didn't even sell me that mop. What? You heard him, Commissioner. What are you trying to do, break up a lifelong friendship? Say, pal, you got any folding money on you? Folding money? Yeah, scratch, moolah, cash a -roo. Oh, cash? I think so, about, about $12. $12? Well, let's live a little. I'll even take you to my club and let you buy me a drink. Oh, but I don't indulge. Well, neither do I. But I'll force myself. Ah, smell that aroma, neighbor. There's nothing like the fragrance of beer soaked mahogany. Go ahead, take a deep breath. <coughs> What'll it be, Goldie? The usual. Who's paying? The usual. And you? I'll, I'll have a glass of sarsaparilla, please. My name's McGoldick, neighbor. Honest John McGoldick. But you can call me Goldie. Everybody does. Let's not talk about me. Here's to us, neighbor. Mm. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Oh, thank you. Now then, what's your racket? Did it, my what? Your racket, your grind, your bacon exchange. What do you do for a living? Oh, uh, I'm an actuary. Once again? Well, until this morning, I was employed at the Nutmeg Insurance Company. I help compile the figures which determine the current rates for the various categories of insurance protection. Ah. Uh, well, let me put it this way, Mr. McGoldrick. By actuarial science, we determine, for example, the life expectancy of the average man. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me you insurance guys can tell me how long I'm going to live? Well, not exactly, but we can tell you just how long you may expect to live. You know, friend, you're wasting your time. You'd be a killer in a concession calling people's numbers. Why, it beats that fortune telling pitch all ragged. We could work up a swell routine. Uh, I, I don't believe I understand. Well, I'm with a carny. Uh, uh, what? A carnival called Acres of Fun. Mm. Uh, well, what's your occupation at this corny? It ain't corny, it's corny. I'm a gimola man. Uh, I, I, I wish you'd be just a little more explicit. I... Uh, I run a gimmick. I'm what you might call an agent on the Wheel of Fortune. It's like that slot machine, only with Cupid dolls. This thing's a fake. I put in 24 nickels and I still can't get McAnally paid. Broke. You know, it's too bad he discontinued. Yeah, never feel sorry for suckers. Oh, but I still think it's a shame. If he'd put in one more nickel, he would have received the entire contents of the machine. Yes, I... The jackpot? How do you know? A well, simple problem in arithmetical progressions. Any machine whose operation is governed by mathematics can be anticipated. Yeah? Mm -hmm. While we've been here, the machine has returned two nickels on the sixth play and four nickels on the thirteenth play, indicating that on the second winning play, a combination had been reached equal to the square root of 322 million raised to the eleventh power. What kind of a hocus-pocus gadget is that? Oh, this is a slide rule, a mechanical device used for making mathematical estimations. You mean to say with that gimmick you can figure out what goes with that one-armed bandit? Oh, no, I, I figured that out in my head. I merely use this to check the accuracy of my computations. You know, I've been observing the player casually, and if my calculations are correct, one more play should produce the John Pot. It's jackpot, and let's just casually go over and casually produce it. Well, I, I don't approve of this type of investment, but if it will prove a point, very well. John Pot, a uh, jackpot. This guy's wanted. He can even figure out slot machines. Neighbor, you just got to get into the carny business. With your knowledge of numbers at my wheel, we clean up a fortune. What do you say, partner? Uh, uh, partner? Yeah, I'm cutting you in 50 50. Here's your nickel back. Thank you. Well, might as well make this a day to remember. 
See, uh, you got that nickel handy, chum? I don't want to unbalance my budget. <laughs> Thanks. Now, what do you say, neighbor? You with it? You're with it? Yeah, that's carnival talk. You know, if you follow the sawdust, work for a circus or carnival, you're with it. Well, that's rather a drastic decision. We a little more of that sarsaparilla might help you make up your mind. Well, Professor, make it a return engagement. You ought to get with it, neighbor. You'd be a natural. The bill is the mathematical marvel. Well, I don't know. You don't seem very happy with that insurance racket. Oh, I, I was very happy until this morning, Mr. McGoldrick. I misplaced a decimal point. You sure somebody didn't steal it? No, no, no. I, I made a mistake, and now I'm a failure. I failed everyone. Myself, my company, my girl, everything. All on account of one mistake? There's no an actuarial work. I just have to start at the bottom of something else. And you came to the right guy, neighbor. You can't start any lower than you can with me. Well, down the hatch. <clears throat> Don't tell me you're a hoofer. Am I? Don't tell me you can tap dance. Oh, well, certainly. Uh, dancing is merely a question of applied mathematics. Now, look, Nappy, you can tell me how long I'm going to live, and you can figure out those slot machines, but don't try to tell me that arithmetic and dancing are the same thing. Why, of course. For example, take three times two equals six. And six times two equals twelve. And the square root of that raised to the fourth power equals... Oh, it's down here. 
I know how you feel, kid. Sarsaparilla does the same thing to me. Uh, now that we're here, Mr. McGoldrick, it doesn't seem like such a good idea. You'll get used to it. You know, once you're with it, you never get out of it. It's like buying a wedding ring on time. Hiya, Goldie. Hello, Harry. Right. Steve, get a load of Goldie. A zombie. The living dead. Uh, when Bunny gets hold of him, he'll be the dead kid. <laughs> I may not be able to adjust myself to all this. Oh, sure you can. A guy like you ain't limited. You've got talent for any job on the lot, except maybe being a midget. You haven't lived until you've seen the queen of the carnival, Bunny LaFleur. I guess I'd from a gold ring. I don't know who Bunny LaFleur is. What? You never heard of Bunny LaFleur? He's the kind of a gal that can turn a guy like you into a guy like me. Great kid, though. Very modest. Like that. I just mention a name and I get hot flashes. Now, here you are, ladies and gentlemen. In less than one minute, Professor Mentor has placed this lovely little lady completely in his power. Now, watch this. That neighbor is a real phony baloney gimmick. But the yokels go for it hook, line, and sink it. On the contrary, hypnosis is a scientifically accepted psychic phenomenon. I studied it in my abnormal psychology course at Harvard. Hmm, what do you know? Well, here's my private little goal, Step right up to the wheel of fortune. Step right up, everybody. Step right up, anybody. About time you came back. Where have you been? Up in Hartford, taking the cure. Well, for drinking? No, from laying off. How's business? Murder. It's enough to drive a guy to drink. You're telling me. Pipe. Uh-oh. Okay, Bert Brain. Take your head out of the sand now. Oh, hello, baby doll. I, I didn't see you. Nice to see you standing up. Well, it's early yet. Where have you been? And I don't believe that either. Well, that takes care of that argument. Look at you. I've seen a better head on a glass of beer. Bunny, I'd like you to say hello to Milton Haskins. This is Bunny LaFleur. Oh, how do you do, Miss LaFleur? Pleased to meet you, Milton. Are you with it? Not yet. I'm taking him into Pop Carter to see about a job. After Pop gets through with you, you're lucky if you're still with it. You look like a nice kid. What'd you do, trip over this guy in the gutter? Oh, no, Miss LaFleur. You see, I was in the park. And Don't I... tell me. He sold you a mop. Well, I guess I better go rinse out a few things. Come back here, to you. You're kind of cute. The serious type, huh? Probably makes some gal a real fine husband. Oh, now, don't start that again. I didn't say anything about us getting married. Married. <laughs> now see what you've done. Slap me on the back, neighbor. <coughs> Just mention the word married and I start shaking. Well, I hope you get with it, Melty. And if you can lose this cornball, come by and let me know. I'm with the Midway Follies. And I leave you with two words. Goodbye. That's one word. A very interesting type. Yeah. I wish she wasn't so crazy about me. Well, I didn't get that impression. You didn't? <laughs> get a load of this picture. Betty Grable, Myrna Lloyd, Von DiCarlo, Abbott and Costello. How did they get in here? Ah, oh, here it is. The only man for me. Oh, that's very touchy. You'd like one, neighbor. She sells it for a dime apiece. Hello, Goldie. Hi. Come on, folks. Step right over here. Oh, Mr. Goldie. Huh. You've got the new look. I still don't control the weather. I know, Please Pop, don't but... interrupt. Rain down in Worcester. Rain down in Springfield. Hiya, Pop. I said don't interrupt. Rain down in Bridgeport. Rain down in New London. Where have you been? Hartford. Rain down in Hartford. I never should have sunk my dough in a carny. I should have built an ark. Will you listen? Now, oh, look, right. your company's been financing my shows for years. Well, now they start to play landlord. Where the deuce do they expect me to dig up that money? Where'd they dig you up? Boss, I'd like you to meet a good Now, you think I'm holding out on you. Well, I'm not. Bogle, show them them books. Never mind, I'll show them myself. You just look at them entries. That's not red ink, that's blood. You look like you've been sleeping in a hollow log. Well, boss, it was like this. I built up this carny from nothing into a first-class tent show. And some dame in Pittsburgh waves a few bucks under their noses, and now they're going to sell me out. How do you like them apples? Well, sir, I think... Who is this guy? It's a privilege to have you... We meet carried a... you all last year. We haven't got a buck out of you this season. We went in deeper and deeper just because it was you. Now Mrs. Hankel's giving us a chance to get out from under. Well, then sell Mrs. Hankel one of the other carnies. You got dozens of turkeys laying around. But she wants acres of fun. And unless you lay some dough on the line, we're gonna have to let her have it. Boss, all right, right now we got a big holiday weekend coming up. New Haven, that's the hottest 4th of July date on the circuit. Now you tell them mice you're working for, I'll send them some cheese on Monday. Speaking of cheese, you're fired. Oh, no, Dig look, up boss. a couple of grand tonight, Pop, and oh, let you... A couple of stuff. grand, Bogle. Tell them how much dough we got on hand. Never mind, I'll show them. Here, there's the roll. 1580 bucks, and I gotta have $1,700 for rain insurance. And if it rains this weekend, I won't be rained out. I'll be washed up. 
Excuse me, sir, but you don't have to worry about rain for the next five days. Oh, fine. Who says so? It's a great pleasure it's to be... very simple. The migrating low-pressure area, which caused the recent inclement weather, is being forced to sea by an area of high pressure sweeping down from west of the Great Lakes. This pressure for five, possibly six days. Who is this witch doctor? That's what I've been trying to tell you. This is Milton Haskins, the smartest noggin that ever came out of Harvard. Go ahead, Junior. Say something in algebra. Say, kid, is this one of Goldie's pictures, or do you really know what you're talking about? Oh, I'm positive of my prognostication, sir. I made quite a study of meteorology. It was a requisite of my recent calling. Right from the paddock, boss. If Junior here says no rain, you can start hanging out your wash. Well, why not? I'm hanging on the ropes anyway. I've gambled on everything else, so I might as well have a bet on Harvard. All right, Mac. Here's the powder. Hold the wolves off till Monday. Fair enough, Bobby. So you... long. And as for you, if there's as much as a heavy dew in New Haven, you two have signed a suicide pact. Not a thing to worry about, boss. This kid knows everything. Why, it'd be a natural for one of the shows. Professor Haskins, the human encyclopedia. Are you with it, son? No, sir. Until this morning, I was an insurance actuary. What company? Nutmeg. Mr. Carter, right now, we can't afford to add a well-fed flea to the flea circus. We're carrying enough dead wood as it is. Listen, Bogle, this kid may not be any elephant boy, but he can handle any job on the lot. How about letting him shill my wheel? Uh, I don't know. Get a load of that kisser. There's a natural-born shill if I ever seen one. Son, do you think you could shill a wheel? Sure you can, can't you? Uh, except for one thing, Mr. Goldie. Uh, what is a shill? <laughs> oh, what a sense of humor. <laughs> Just what a good shill needs, eh, Pop? <laughs> What's a shill? Come on, we better get going. The whole of Ares, folks. Yes, Paul. It was a tough fight, kid, but we made it. You're following the sawdust. Well, that's splendid, but what am I supposed to do? You're a shill. Like, come on for the rustics. You make like a gilly. Any questions? Uh, yes, what am I supposed to do? How do you like that? They learn them everything at Harvard except English. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You'll see 30 gorgeous, beautiful girls and every one a perfect bitch in our friends. I want you to be Sally. But that's a very pretty girl. Sally? She's the kind of a girl you like to take home to mother. On a night when you know your mother ain't home. Poison. I'm going over to my wheel. Come over in a few minutes and make like a stranger. See that satisfying, sensational gorilla valley. Ladies and gentlemen, the beauty and the beast. Ah, that's the signal for the show to start. Get tickets over there. Get tickets over here. And there's nothing in that front row. It's the main attraction on the midway, so come on and get with the girls. Here's the spot for action on the midway. See the greatest delightful, exciteful review with the beautiful, beautiful girls. Every doll in the follies has a daring bit of devil in her eyes. When she throws a curve in your direction, you can feel your temperature rise. Every doll in the follies has a lot of what it takes to get along. You'll go out with a grin, so you better come in. Get with it and you can't go wrong. You saw the big parade, you heard the carny tunes, you had your lemonade, you bought your big balloon. Are you getting with it, neighbor? Are you getting with it, friend? You rode the Ferris wheel and then the scooter ride. You had your fortune told and now you're starry-eyed. Now you're getting with it, neighbor. Now you're getting with it, friend. Corn and lots of cotton candy are much too good to resist. Hot dog, you're feeling fine and dandy, but here's a treat that you've missed. Every doll in the follies wants to see you sitting in the second row. Let your eyes be your guide, it's fair and warmer inside. Are you in it? Are you in it? If you are, then come on, let's go. All right, folks, step up to the wheel of fortune, the wheel of chance. Put your money down, the wheel goes round, and who wins? I do. But you have a lot of fun. Well, hello, bud. Out for a good time, eh? Well, you came to the right place. Now, what did you say your name was? Well, Mr. Goldie, you know what my name is. Ixnay, Ixnay, you don't know me, and I don't know you. Just keep picking numbers, I'll give you your dough back later. 
All right, you look like a bright young fella. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. To start things off, I'm going to let you pick two numbers for the price of one. Uh, but I only need one. Uh, you only need one. Okay, pick one. First, turn the wheel. Number five. Round and round it goes, and where it stops, nobody knows. The money's on number five, but the winner is number five. Hey, you really won. Oh, I fully expected to win. I watched your wheel before. You see, the nails are a half an inch apart, and there are 21 nails to each 15 sections of the wheel. And dividing the circumference... Wait a minute. Let me see you do it again. All right, but first I'll take my prize. But I won. Title to it. Go on and give the kid his prize. Here you are, son. You want it fair and square, and you're entitled to it. Spin the wheel, please. Number seven. Oh. My prize, please. Boy, this guy can sure pick him. He sure can. Merely applied mathematics. How we do it? Grand. Spin the wheel, please. Number four. Number four? That's good oh, enough for four. me. I'll take number four. That's good enough. Sorry, folks, I'm all out. No more dolls. But I want a doll. What are you going to do about it? What can I do? I'm yours. Take me. Why, you crook. Well, we've really done business. You sold out completely. This may come as a complete surprise to you, neighbor, but I didn't want to sell out. I... I wasn't supposed to win? The words are one syllable, neighbor. No. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Goldie. I... I didn't understand. I guess I'm a failure at everything. There's two careers I've ruined in one day. Hey, wait a minute, Junior. You ain't ruined yet. Everybody makes mistakes in this racket. We just have to find a job where education ain't no handicap. Well, might as well close up shop. Come on, give me a hand, will you, neighbor? Popcorn, peanuts, crack a jacket, chewing gum, yeah? Popcorn, I uh, got it. I got it, old pal, old kid. What's he celebrating this time? Another birthday. Well, the birthdays he's been celebrating lately must be 2,000 years old. That's for me. I'm gonna have a candle with 2,000 cakes on it. <laughs> oh, brother. You better get this guy dehydrated before pop season. What we're worried about is getting him ready for the next show. Well, as an expert in such matters, I'd say your little dancing partner won't be back among the living for 36 hours. Do we tell Pop now and quit or wait and get fired? That's why I get fired. You know, it's a shame. Little cookies, I tell you what I'm gonna do. A great personal sacrifice, I'm gonna lend you my number one shill. Milton Haskins, the greatest natural born dancer since Salami. Let's get lost weekend over to my tent. Where are we going? Better get ready for the show, girls. You've been drinking, Cologne. Or color. Boy, this is a bridegroom. Bridegroom. Here I go again. Come on. Say, Milty Boy, you really want it for action. All you need is someone to throw the switch. Vivian! Hello. Milton! What are you doing here? I, I came here looking for you. Are, are you all right? Well, certainly, but how'd you find me? Well, I stayed late at the office waiting for you to come back. Then some man from this place called and asked a lot of questions about you. Pardon me for sticking my nose into this conversation, but this character by any chance sound like he was talking through bubblegum? He had sort of a nasal voice. Bogle. Uh-huh. They've started checking character references in the Carney business. You're dead. I had an idea Mr. Bogle resented my presence. You're better off. He makes a wonderful stranger. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Miss LaFleur, Mr. McGoldrick, may I present my secretary and fiancé? Which one is this? Uh, she's both. <laughs> Miss Vivian Riley. How do you do? Howdy. Pleased to meet you, honey. Uh, say, Dreamboat, don't you have to go rinse out a few things, huh? 
Oh, I'm wearing them. Oh, I get it. You, you figure they want to be alone. Better hurry. You're on in five minutes. All right. Now, come on. Let's go. Milton, what are you doing in that monkey suit? And what are you doing in a place like this? I'm with it. You what? Uh, with it. That's corny lingo. I work here. I'm an elephant boy who's full of sawdust. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm a sawdust boy who's full of elephants. <laughs> well, I hope one of us knows what you're talking about. Well, maybe I haven't said it correctly, but I'm with it and I'm full of something. Milton, what are you doing in that outfit? That's what I'm trying to find out. This is the one that Goldie gave me. He's just a week behind, as usual. This week, we do the Arabian number. Oh, I, I don't think I'd look so good in one of those, but I'll go over and change. Wait a minute, we're late now. Go change them in our dressing room. Oh, I'll see you after the show. Oh, I'm right behind you, just in case you need a fault for a game of bridge. Now you have heard the story told a thousand and one times Of days in old Arabia and nights of Persian crimes How Ali Baba found the gold and fooled the forty thieves And saved up all his money, that's what everyone believes Down at Baba's Ali, he is the king of them all Baba, Baba, baby, I'm weak when you're away. Oh, Baba, Baba, baby, just speak and I'll obey. Baba, Baba, nothing, pay the cabba. In Babylon, my married life began with only one. And when I took a second wife, the fight had just begun. My third one was a cutie with a beauty I adore. It's legal down in Persia, so I ended up with four. Down at Baba's alley. I am the king of them all. I got a package sent to me without a postage stamp. What he thought was a coffee pot was just Aladdin's lamp. He whispered all the magic words and gave the lamp a rub. And there I was, the owner of the Baba's Alley Club. Down at Baba's Alley. I am the king of them all. Has anybody asked for me, or have I had a call? Paul Abdullah phoned you from the Taj Mahal. And Peppy's waiting for the stuff and needs it bad, I fear. If Peppy old Moko wants his cocoa, he comes here. Down at Baba's Alley, I am the king of them all. A very sultry sultan was consulting me one day. Talked a little business, then he traveled far away. I set him up in Baghdad in a new department. He's selling oriental drugs and I get 10%. Down at Baba's Alley, I am the king of them all. We're known for our variety beyond the River Nile. We cater to society in any shape or style. It's home for all the sheiks who seek a place to hang their hats. We even have a place in back for all the alley cats. Down at Baba's Alley, I am the king of them all. king of them all. Now in the land of Sheba lives a sultan and his wives. He brags about the way he leads a thousand different lives. But I should do the bragging and be dragging the applause. Cause I'm the only one supporting for mother-in-laws. Down at Baba's Alley, I am the king of them all. 
down at Baba's Alley. I was the king of them all. What'd you think of it, honey? Pretty terrific, huh? I wish you'd hurry. I want to talk to you. Uh, yes, yes, I'll be with you in a minute. Excuse me. Three curtain calls. <laughs> Gee, we never got that many before. Well, it's obvious we could have taken another. <laughs> what do I do with this stuff? I'll take it off. Yeah, but, but I just put it on. Uh. Say, you're in like a burglar, neighbor. I just told Pop Potter that Buster ran into a door. Of course, I didn't tell him it was a swinging door. <laughs> <laughs> when we go to New Haven, Milky Boy, you're going to do a spot with me. Oh, that's splendid, Miss Funny. We'll kill the public. Milton! You're not going to New Haven. Mr. Bixby wants you back at Nutmeg, and there's a bus for Hartford in 20 minutes. You don't think I could go back to the insurance business after this? Well, this is no place for you. You don't belong here. Oh, of course I do. I I'm a natural-born carny man. Isn't that right, neighbor? Neighbor? Me? Oh, yes, yes, sure. That's right. You stay out of this, balloon head. But, Milton, what happens to all your wonderful plans about Nutmeg? And us? And Horace? And the 264 pickets. Well, that still goes. Does it? Certainly. You can't put a picket fence around a carnival tent. When you get back home and think it over, you'll feel different. Now, look, honey, all my clothes are over at Goldie's tent. As soon as I get dressed, I'll walk you to the bus. I'm getting ready. Please tell Mr. Haskins I decided not to wait. Good idea, sister. I'll take you to the bus. You'll need someone to carry them up. What, Mom? Oh, you no, you don't. I'll take her. Come with me, honey, while I change. You and I are going to have a little talk. Thanks. I'd appreciate talking to someone. Come on. Get lost. Nice going, kid. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Jack. Hey, Milton. Well, I handled that crisis for you. The men has decided not to wait. Oh, she must be madder than I thought. I better get dressed and go after her. Hey, unlax, Junior. With women, you don't show them you're anxious. Let her wait a couple of days and you're the man of the hour. Go after her now. Time marches on. <laughs> you don't know Vivian. No, but I know women. Vivian isn't so, right, you? That's just a come on, so you'll quit the carnival. Listen, brother, all women are two-faced. And with those two faces, they got two heads. And believe me, those two heads are always together in a conspiracy against us. Brother, I know. <laughs> Goldie. Boy, he must have been seeing plenty of snakes. Well, that kind of snake doesn't bite. Looks like he's been slugged. All right, neighbor? Yeah. What happened? Someone was going through the suitcase. I, I tried to stop him, and he jumped me. I'll be all right. OK. Say, you sure you ain't by any chance carrying the crown jewels in there? No. Only a few dollars in case of emergency. That's funny. In plain sight, it hasn't been touched. In that case, I don't have to dig up an alibi. Well, it, it must have been a mistake. Goldie. Where'd that come from? Well, looks like no dice, Junior. Even with mathematics, we won't find that guy in this crowd. Not unless you're carrying a concealed bloodhound. I don't get it. Why would anybody want to rub us out? Well, now that's Goldie, me. Me? He only searched my suitcase. Yeah, you're right. So maybe your girl has got the right idea. Maybe you don't belong in this rack. Oh, you're not getting rid of me now. But somebody's mighty careless with a rejected razor. It might throw another blade. Yeah, but don't you see, Goldie? This is excitement. All my life, nothing ever happened to me. At Nutmeg, a leaky fountain pen was a big event. Only this morning, the world came to an end because I misplaced a decimal point. But now, now somebody's after me. Maybe he wants to kill me. That's living. Some living. From actuary to obituary in one day. <laughs> Goldie, design your wheel this way and the customers will win more often, but not as much. It's a better break for the gillies and a higher percentage for the house. Neighbor, this is the greatest invention since loaded dice. And it's legitimate, too. <laughs> I'm going to try it out on Buddy before I show it to the old man. Yes. Oh. I hope you'll excuse the intrusion, Mr. Haskins, but I'm in trouble and I think you can help me. Won't you come in for a moment? Mr. Haskins, I'm taking out a life insurance policy, and I need some advice. I understand you were an insurance man before you got with it. Uh, I, I wasn't in the selling end, Miss Sally, but I'll be glad to help if I can. Isn't he just the sweetest thing, Boopsy? I'm leaving everything to Boopsy. Oh. Won't you uh, sit down, Milton? Oh. 
Thank you. Just what sort of work did you do for the insurance company? Uh, I was in the BOOPSI, I mean, the uh, actuarial department. Is uh, that the same as the investigating department? Uh, uh, no, uh, actuaries merely compute the rates. How simply devastating. Oh, not really. We use proven facts to compile statistics reflecting the economic structure of the entire world. Uh, do you follow me? No, but uh, you're dragging me along. Tell me more. Come in. Baby doll, I want... Miss Riley, I thought you took the bus. I invited her along for the weekend. Any objections? In the tone of that voice, my little doll face has been sticking her pretty nose into somebody else's business again, hasn't she? It's Milton, Mr. McGoldrick. Ever since his slide rule double-crossed him, he hasn't been the same. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Mm, that's a dame for you. For the first time in his life, a guy does what he really wants to do, and you think he's nuts. Milton Haskins is no more off his noggin than I am. Huh. That's what's worrying her. He might snap out of it in a day or two. I think I better be around to gather up the pieces. Fine. You jump out of a dark closet and yell surprise? Or do we let him know you're here? Oh, we were just going down to tell him. Chin. Well, what's keeping us? Let's go. And for still another example of actuarial work, let us take the demographic equinox. If the world birth rate continues its present decline, by 1960, deaths will outnumber births by 17 millions. And I think it's up to the younger generation, such as you and me, to do something about it. Well, that's a new approach. I beg your pardon? Skip it. Well, I guess I found out everything I wanted to know. But we haven't even discussed your policy. Uh, what amount did you have in mind? Oh, I'd say $10,000. 10000 That'll be very expensive. I, I'd suggest a more conservative figure, like 5000 Say Same neighbor. Well, with your experience, Milton, you should know. Yes. Looking at it from every angle, I'd say my figure is better than yours. I've heard of matching pennies, but never this. Oh, uh, uh, Milton must have stepped out. The trouble is, your figure's way out of proportion. Well, if you insist, Milton, I'll trim it down. Yes, I, I would advise... Wasn't that Milton's voice? No, no, that, that was me. I used to be a ventriloquist. Here, I'll show you. Are you down there? Yes, I'm down there. How do you feel? <laughs> you see, you can hardly see my lips move. His eyes almost pop out of his head, but you can hardly see his lips move. Oh, careful, Boopsie, you almost fell off my lap. Oh, Boopsie was only trying to show you how... Oh, Did I ever show you my family album? Ah, yes, here it is. What a family. Good, red-blooded American pioneers. Why, my ancestors go all the way back to Columbus. Except two of them. They only go back as far as Toledo. <laughs> yes. There he is, my favorite ancestor, Daniel Boone McGoldrick. They say I look just like him. Oh. But you don't want to hear about my family. Now, Boopsie, stop kissing me. <laughs> Boopsie, stop kissing me. Well, I'm going to tell you about my family anyway. <laughs> Daniel Boone McGoldrick. What an adventurous life he led. In the use of the left of him. Indians to the right of him. Indians in back of him. Indians in front of him. Ah, bang! Got him right in the middle of his teepee. Bang! There goes another pesky varmint. Bang! Psst! Tarn nation, misfire that time. Must have got my powder wet. You know, Boopsy, you're kind of cute at that. Don't so stop. That's Boopsie. why he wants Boopsie to stay with the carnival. He's in there playing post office with a Boopsy! Milton! Vivian! What are you oh. doing? Vivian, you leave her alone, you two-timing little timetable, you. You men are all alike. What's this all about? Sensitive little things, women. In a situation like this, they're apt to be a wee bit narrow-minded. Well, Goldie, she didn't think that we, uh, that Sally, uh, that I... Oh, no, I gotta see Vivian. Hold it, Junior. This kind of thing I've had experience with. Nothing you can say is gonna help. Just gotta wait till she cools off a while. But it was all perfectly innocent. We were talking about her dog. Sure, sure. How could she even think such a thing about me? That's it. That's your angle. You're the injured party. You're sore because she had the nerve to suspect you when you're innocent. I am innocent. Now you got it. Just keep saying that and leave everything else to me. By the time I'm through, she'll come crawling back to you on her hands and knees to apologize. But suppose she doesn't. Oh, you don't know dames like I do. You gotta outsmart them. All you gotta do is let them think what you think they think you're thinking. Honey, you gotta make allowances for men. They're all alike. Take even an ordinary date. They ask if you'd like to have dinner. You say yes. They ask if you'd like a show. You say yes. They ask you if you like to dance. You say yes. Then they want to make with a love talk. You say no just once and they get sore at you. I'm still getting off at the next stop. Oh, honey, you're smarter than that. You don't get the guy you want by running away. Well, I'm through throwing myself at that corny Casanova. But that's just the point, kid. From now on, you don't have to. You've got Milty Boy right where you want him. All you have to do is wait and he'll come crawling to you on his hands and knees. Spend the rest of his life apologizing. I suppose he doesn't. You don't know men like I do. You gotta outsmart them. All you gotta do is figure out what a woman would do if she had no brains, and that's what a man does. Oh, but Bunny, I... Oh, honey, it's all settled. 
And just in case he's already crawling down here, I'll skip out for a little fresh air. You don't think that he's going to... Now, gonna... remember, play hard to get. <sighs> what I wouldn't give to get Geronimo in a spot like this. <laughs> Gee, Milton. Look at you. You're so crazy about the guy. You don't know whether you're coming or going. He's got you singing to him when he isn't here. He's got you talking to him when he isn't here. And the next thing you know, he'll be answering you when he isn't here. And when that happens... What do I have to do to make you love me? What do I have to do to make you fall? Seems like my head is getting dizzy From having to hit my heart against a wall So why do I have to swim the deepest ocean? How many highest mountains can I climb? I'm running out of every doggone scheme to make my dream come true. What do I have to do to make you love me the way that I love you? is going to revolutionize larceny. Everybody wins. And it only costs them twice as much to win what they wouldn't pay half as much to buy. Is that clear to you? Yes. Well, we should explain it to me. Goldie Vivian's had enough time to cool off. I wonder why I haven't heard from her. How can you hear from her when I haven't had a chance to work on her? And how can I work on her when that stubborn bunny won't even let me in to see her? That's the trouble with females of the opposite sex. They're too opposite. He knows I'm here. He hasn't even tried to see me. He would if old Punch Drunk wasn't in there coaching him. You know, it could be Milton we're wrong about. It looks like he has a wild oat that suddenly sprouted. And it's the boopsy type he goes for. Kid, if that's what he goes for, that's what you gotta be. The thing for you to do is to get with it yourself. Me? In a carnival? Well, why not? You've got the merchandise. Just say the word and I'll rig up the showcase. I... When I was a little girl I loved collecting things, simple, sentimental souvenirs. Now that I'm a grown-up girl, I still love simple things. Guess I haven't changed in all these years. When you bring me home that yacht, Buy the house that goes with a lot. Don't let me know what I'm getting. Daddy, surprise me. When you're driving into town, bring the furs that go with the gown. Don't tell me I'm getting sable. Daddy, surprise me. I could suggest that you buy me the best, or baby may leave you flat. I could hint, you get me the mint, but I'd never do a thing like that. When you want my eyes to shine, get the gold that goes with the mine. Don't tell me I'm worth a million, daddy surprised me. <laughs> when we dine on caviar, by the club that goes with the bar. Don't tell me who gets the business. Daddy's surprised. When you're at that racing course, by the track that goes with the horse. Don't tell me I picked a winner. Daddy, surprise me. They say to give is the right way to live. And I will agree because I be. You're bound to receive just as long as 
they're the Santa Claus. When you're in the mood to splash, buy the bank that goes with the cash. Don't let me lose any interest. Daddy, surprise me. set the bail at 50 bucks a piece, and I've just got enough to spring the maintenance crew. Well, boys, make yourself to home. All right, all right, fellas. I'll get you all out as soon as I raise the money. Carter, you can't raise a quarter, and you know it. The only thing you can do is turn the carnival over to Mrs. Henkel. She'll have everyone out in no time. What do you know about Mrs. Henkel? She's my new boss. I'm going to run the carny for her. How long have you been working on this, you two-bit termite? Getting tough won't help, Carter. Slug him for me, Pop. Yeah. Ah, it's no use, Goldie. Looks like we're rained out permanent. All right, all right, you. We'll phone Mrs. Henkel. That's being sensible. My first official act, Mr. McGoldrick, is to get rid of you. You're fired. Uh, and the same goes for you, Haskin. Fool! Uh, Sally Bogle and Porky. There's a nice three rat parley for you. I find it very illuminating. I'm convinced now that Sally's problem last night was merely a subterfuge to find out something about me. For Bogle. Here's something else for you to chew on, Junior. Porky started his career in the carnival business as a knife thrower. Everything that's happened to me seems to add up to Bogle. Why? When you're in the clink, kid, why ain't important? It's when. When do we get out of here? As long as you and me are number one and two on Bogle's hate parade, he'll spring everybody but us. Milton Haskins. Yes, sir. Mr. Bixby. Miss Riley phoned me. Utterly disgraceful, Haskins. Two nutmeg employees incarcerated. Here's the other one. 
Miss Riley. Hello, Mr. Bixby. I hope this has been a lesson to both of you. Yes, Mr. Bixby. Well, your bail has been paid. Naturally, Haskins, it will come out of your salary. Let's get out of this depressing place. I I'm sorry, Mr. Bixby, but I can't leave without the others. But if you spring them, too, you could take it all out of my salary. Don't be fantastic, Haskins. That would take years. Two years, ten months, and one week, sir. Haskins, nutmeg is not in the springing business. Then I don't leave. Open the clink, copper. I'm staying up the river. Don't overdo it, showboat. Scram while the scramming is good. Haskins, the actuarial department is meeting at one o'clock to determine what will be done about the supplementary tables. Now, you prepared them. I've promised Mr. Mapleton you'll be there. Then unpromise him. You don't spring me without springing my pal Goldie. And I don't go without Bunny. Take me back to my cell. Wait a minute. Have you two gone crazy? That's the situation. Take it or leave it. Right. Double or nothing. Oh, doctor, I have a lady in the balcony. Oh, very well. I'll postpone for the four. But you're leaving all this foolishness and coming back to nutmeg. Yes, sir. Gentlemen, nutmeg, in its usual spirit of fair play, is giving our Mr. Haskins the opportunity of replacing his misplaced decimal point. We will now discuss the corrected rate tables. Mr. Haskins. Gentlemen, I respectfully submit that we leave the decimal point where it is. Reports from our 1300 agencies definitely indicate that the slightly reduced rate is a sensational gimmick, uh, a sales stimulant. Now, what nutmegers need to write along was a come on for the gillies. Do you follow me, neighbors? It's a better break for the rustics, but a higher percentage for the house. Uh, that is, the company will profit from the volume. N now, don't change the mistake. Give it a value. Get a load of this pitch our salesman can throw. So, you say you're not going to slam with nutmeg, eh? So, you say you can do better someplace else, eh? So, you ain't satisfied. You think you can get more for your money. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave that decimal point right where it is and let you put something over on the company. There it is, folks. The new nutmeg policy. It's sensational. It's colossal. It's terrific. And it's all there on the inside. Look, 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 look. Excuse look, me, gentlemen. I had everyone in the claims department helping me. There's nothing on Bogle. But here's a complete file on Minerva Hankel. Ah, that's it. Gentlemen, I've got to rinse out a few things. Uh, sit close to a phone, neighbor. If Herman Bogle has a tattoo on his chest, you'll be hearing from me. Rinse out a few things. Bob, if Herman Bogle has a tattoo on his chest, you haven't lost the carnival. If Herman Bogle has a tattoo on his chest, I haven't lost the carnival. <laughs> Goldie, if that's supposed to make sense, you figure it out. This is your genius. But it does make sense. When we got back to the office, I suddenly realized that Bogle's interest wasn't in me. He was interested in my connection with Nutmeg. So we checked the records to find out why. Son, I'm all washed up. This is now Mrs. Hankel's show. And tattoos, nutmegs, and slide rules. I won't change it. Milton, show him the Hankel file. Vivian, you know Rule 8, Section 3, Clause 2. Nutmeg files are confidential. Bob, uh, even though your interests are involved, my findings can only be revealed to an official of the company. But first, I must know one more thing. Does Bogle have a tattoo on his chest? Milty boy, you lost me on the far turn. But if that's the jackpot question, Bogle does have a tattoo on his chest. Pardon me for pointing, dollface, but how do you know? Don't get excited. The old vulture started to make like a lovebird one day, and I tried to scratch his baby blues out, and my aim was bad. I tore open his shirt. Did the tattoo have a heart with an arrow through it with the two names Herbert and Minerva? Well, I was too busy slugging to do any reading. Well, there's one way to find out. Where's Mr. Bogle now? Bogle flew to Pittsburgh to close the deal. He's coming back with Mrs. Hankel tonight. They're reopening tomorrow. Pop, if you'll just hang around till Bogle gets here, I think it'll be you who'll reopen tomorrow. With what will I reopen and with whom will I reopen? Everybody's still in jail. Except the musicians. The union sprung them. Well, they're all we need to get things started. And as fast as the money comes in, we, we can bail out the others. If that's all there is to it, Junior, why wait until tomorrow? Why not tonight? That's right. Why not? Pop, you can handle the ballet, and the three of us can take care of the rest. The four of us can take care of the rest. <laughs> you might as well face it, Milty Boy. She's just as withered as you are. Even witherer. <laughs> Throw knives at me. You can't even slice bread. Stop worrying. Got an eye like an eagle. Used to be spitball champ in grammar school. Now, my friends, if you will all just step a little bit closer, you are about to witness one of the most daring, death-defying acts you have ever seen. This little lady is about to throw knives, razor-sharp knives at her companion while being completely blindfolded. You didn't say anything about being blindfolded. What's the matter? You got water in your veins? I'm not going to wait around to find out. Get back there, you coward. What do you want to do, embarrass me? No, of course, embarrass you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you will observe that I am tying a knot. As a matter of fact, I am tying a double knot. There you are, little lady. Round and round you go. Careful now, careful. 
Ready? Hey, the other way, lady. Oh, there you are. Splendid. Ladies and gentlemen, Count Boris. <clears throat> supposed to dip it and soak it. This way, this way, this way, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you Colonel Murgatroyd, that intrepid explorer, and Bongo, Bongo, the most intelligent chimpanzee in captivity. The one with the mustache is Colonel Murgatroyd. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Livingston. Ladies and gentlemen, when I first found Bongo in the jungles of darkest Africa, he was just a little monkey. I raised him and taught him everything I know. Today, eminent psychologists credit him with the intelligence of a six-year-old child. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bongo will now show you how he eats his breakfast every morning. Go ahead, Bongo, eat your breakfast. Eat your breakfast, will you, Bongo? What's the matter, you on a diet? Come on, Bongo, will you eat your breakfast, please? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bongo will now show you how he plays the piano. The piano. <laughs> this be Mr. Hush. <laughs> hey, Colonel, you should have left him in the jungle. <laughs> this way, this way, this way, ladies and gentlemen. With your kind permission, you are about to witness the most mystifying of all illusions. Right before your very eyes, Professor Ling Chang is going to saw his lovely assistant, Little Lotus Blossom, in two. Professor Ling Chang. <laughs> Hey, one moment, please. I'm not too sure about this thing, but on the seventh downstroke of the saw, I should be through the wood. Hmm. If anything goes wrong, let me know. Don't worry, I will. Hey, just whisper, I'll hear you. I saw The alligator man and the midgets are back. Some more of the gang are on their way over. Good. The Midway Follies is practically sold out. Go on over and tell Sam to start the show. Watch her. We only sprung the geeks. The dames are still in the Bastille. That's fine. Well, you go over there with Bunny and keep things rolling until we take in enough dough to spring the gals. Okay, whatever you say, Pop. Oh, no. Now I've seen everything. and hurry over to the Midway Follies as quick as you can. 
Goldie and Bunny can't hold the crowd down forever. The crowd's sounding pretty nasty. That's gratitude for you. What do they want, my blood? Well, you better give them a pint or those hyenas will make yesterday's clam bake look like a picnic. When they want dames, they want dames. Even Doc Meadow and his hypnotism couldn't quiet that gang. That's it, Goldie, that's it. I said something? You did. Come on, Vivian, I'll need you. Uh, you too, buddy, come on. Mr. Mapleton. Haskins, Mr. Mapleton considered your phone call serious enough to warrant his personal attention. If your accusations prove unfounded, Haskins, it may put Nutmeg in a very embarrassing position. I'm sure of my ground, sir, and as soon as Mrs. Henkel gets here, I'll prove it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy. Mr. McGoldrick here will show you around. Ooh. Come on, girls. See here, Haskins. A gentleman would like to introduce to you a little gimmick called the Wheel of Fortune. Not a game of chance. You haven't got a chance. It's just a harmless bit of diversion. Now, just step this way. And be careful, will you please? Don't fall down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today we have something unique to offer you. A flight of fancy of your own making. You need only use your imagination and you will see whatever you wish to see. I wish to see dames. Bring them out. No sooner said than done. Now, give all your attention to the young lady on the swinging pendulum and we can continue. Imagination, my friends, is a marvelous thing. Through the subtle force of its magic, the eye but wishes to behold. It can transmute lead into gold and ugliness into beauty. It can make a hero of the coward and give pride to the humble. It only takes a little imagination to change a beggar to a king. It makes the wind of a wintry day seem like a breath of spring. Slowly, silently, we find ourselves slipping away. Away from reality into the enchanted land of imagination. Now, we have only to create what we wish to see. You want a castle in a faraway romantic land? Think of it, and it is yours. want a beautiful princess? Naturally, a princess always has ladies in waiting. And the princess always has a problem. Thou seest here before thee a princess of the crown whose loneliness hath driven her to tears. Here with my ladies in waiting I've been waiting for years. The heart that art me only thinks hath naught to do but die. In plain and simple words, I want a guy. I'm looking for a prince of a fella, a Romeo in disguise. If you romance a lot, like knights or Lancelot, you'll see me glance a lot in his eyes. I want to be a sly Cinderella and know the moment he I'm looking for a prince of a fella to come and see and conquer this heart of mine. How long must you wait for your noble day? I'm looking for a prince of a charmer who has a way with his charms. A gay and gallant lad like Knight Sir Galahad who wants to wrap me up in his arms. Somebody who will kiss and caress me Oh, what a joy it will be. I'm looking for a prince of a fella who's looking for a lovable girl like me.
With a castle on top of a cloud Where all of your wishes are granted Where sweethearts are always allowed So if it takes a little imagination I know exactly what I'll do I'll keep you here within my heart Within my dreaming and Hey, Sam. Oh, Sam. What's going on around here? Shh, please, Mr. Bull. The princess and the knight. Princess and what knight? Well, what in the... Now, go on, girls. Get well, Mr. Over. Carter, it was very considerate of you to keep things going for Mrs. Hinkle. We'll thank you to turn over the receipts. I'm very sorry, Mr. Bogle, but young Haskins is now vice president in charge of turning over receipts. Hey. That's it, folks. Our little visit is over. Now, back to a real show. <laughs> I assumed as much. Skip the formalities, Haskins. Give us our dough and get out of here. All in due time, Mr. Bogle. You'll get everything that's coming to you. Would you mind following me, please? Oh, Haskins, that's an amazing contraption you designed. Most entertaining. These guys don't know it, but they just bailed out the rest of the gang. Oh, Mrs. Hankel. 
May I present Mr. Mapleton, the president of the Nutmeg Insurance Company. Mrs. Henkel is very busy, and she's not interested in any insurance policies right now. But these gentlemen are. It's all right, sir. It's right here. Claim 80523. This woman's husband was supposed to have disappeared at sea on June 6, 1940. He was legally declared dead after seven years. Last week, Nutmeg paid her $35,000 for her husband's life insurance policy. What of it? There's no law against that. Gentlemen, I specifically charge that this woman and her husband engineered his supposed disappearance in order to defraud Nutmeg. And I further charge that the husband never disappeared at all. And in order to prove it, I give you the second half of the conspiracy. Gentlemen, allow me to present Mr. Herbert Henkel, alias Mr. Herman Bogle. What is this, a gag? I never saw this man before today. My lawyers recommended him, and I hired him over the telephone. Lawyers? Haskins, you assured us you had definite evidence. More than that, sir, proof positive. The same tattoo that adorned Mr. Henkel's chest can be found on Mr. Bogle's chest. A heart and arrow with the two names... Now, Mosey Boy? Herbert and Minerva. Well, are you satisfied? Nutmeg extends its profoundest apologies. Come on, Mr. Bogle. Bunky, darling. Oh, I just knew you couldn't be married. Why, well, think what it would mean to me and to the baby. Baby? <laughs> it's a lie. Don't believe it. You double-crossing little worm. It's a frame-up, believe me. Seven long years I waited, alone, and in Pittsburgh yet. And all the time you were fooling around. You fool, they're tricking you. You even took my name off your chest. No, I didn't. This is a decal. I can take it right off. Look. You figured you'd give me the brush. Oh, I did. You stick it off. That's proof positive, all right. Anybody that acts like that has got to be married. Hey, baby doll. I just said married and nothing happened. Now well, maybe we'll finally get him someplace. Bixby, we'll have to take immediate steps for the return of that money. Gentlemen, I'm afraid you're too late. They've already spent it to buy this carnival. <laughs> Looks like nutmegs in the carny business. And you could come down and play my wheel anytime you wanted to. For free. I could? You mean... Yes, it was like a solid investment at that. Now you're talking, neighbor. Of course, you two realize you're still employees of nutmeg. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, definitely, sir. And between seasons, we'll work on the rate books. And we can settle down in that little white cottage with the 264 pickets. <laughs> hey, that sounds like our house. Certainly. Where do you think we're going to live? Well, we're not between seasons now. There's a show going on. Either you're with it or you're not. We're with, with it. it. Well, let's get with it. Come on, honey. See ya. That's good. Hey, Pop. Pop, up here. I thought I figured it out right here. All right, so I made a mistake. You know, honey, a guy can have an awful lot of fun making mistakes. <laughs> 